So now we've looked at the Nazi economy. I want to do now is look at the Nazi society. What society was like between 1933, so 1933 and 1939. Okay, the the period of time that was relatively peaceful for Nazi Germany and was what we would consider to be the time where the the Nazi Party can really almost show off their their government and institutional institutional abilities because after this they were at war so we can't really we can't really understand how the Nazi party really functioned after this because it was it became more and more chaotic so the first thing we're going to do is look at living standards and then next we'll look at women within Nazi Germany the role that they played and then we'll look at what was known as the people's community which is part of Nazi ideology so let's start with living standards, okay? So, really, the Nazis promoted a better deal to uh, German citizens, okay? Taking into account the economic success, the Nazis were able to do a number of things, okay? And we've already looked at the Nazis' economic success, and we've already concluded that they had mixed economic success, didn't they? They had mixed, mixed economic economic success and generally most historians attribute to the uh, the Nazis economic success to just as a more general upturn within the Nazi uh, within the um, within the world effectively but there was an economic upturn and we will look at this so a number of things were able to were people were able to do so wages and working conditions were improved Okay, again, this increases support. This increases support. Increases support. Okay, uh, there were vast improvement to workers' benefits. So we've already talked about uh, things like the Strength Through Joy program. So we have things like sports opportunities. We have theatres, concerts, exact things like that, and we have generally the Strength Through Joy. Okay, so we have the Strength. The strength through through joy. Okay. There were improved benefits from strength through joy, <laughs> for example, and the German labour front. Okay, so we have this. We have this more uh, communal society. It's less divided now. Okay, and that's one thing that fascism really brings. Uh, really brings to uh, societies. For all of its, you know, seen as it is the most terrible evil ideology in the world, the way it works is it brings people together through a number of aims. It finds itself a target within society, an enemy within society. You can't have fascism without an enemy. And that became the Jews. And, you know, it was the Jews for Nazi Germany. Okay. And they also bound together in terms of. A, a community that the people um, help to develop and increase and uh, grow together okay and we'll talk about the people's community in a minute okay so there was an income increase for agricultural workers which was something that was very interesting since since agricultural workers were hit hard a number of times so agriculture wasn't easy agriculture wasn't easy uh, during during Weimar, it weren't it wasn't easy during the Weimar Republic, okay, and it wasn't easy during the the Great Depression. The Great Depression because there was just uh, a general uh, economic downturn during the Great Depression and during Weimar because of the the hyperinflation crisis. Agricultural workers were some of the ones that were hit most from the. Uh, the, from the hyperinflation crisis of 1923. We also see the increase in car ownership. We find that Volkswagen or people's car was a popular was a popular uh, a popular uh, owner a car for 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 Germany, okay? So and again, it all comes back to this community, this people's community. We have the people's car which is the Volkswagen, and we'll have the people's community and we'll look at this in a minute, okay? So car ownership tripled under the Nazis, 
okay, between these years. So the Volkswagen popular, what, sorry, Volkswagen was a very popular car, okay, and it proved to increase living standards. When it comes to the role of women in the party, okay, it must be said that the Nazi party was deeply anti-feminist, okay, so any kind of women, women's movements uh, were very deeply opposed by the Nazi party. But however, despite this, you still see the, the, the support from women was still relatively high during the, uh, during the 33 to 39, okay? Because really they were part of the same ideology. They became anti-feminists themselves, okay? And it should be noted that, noted that a number of things, uh, a number of policies were put in place to restrict to restrict women's freedoms, okay? Oopsie daisy. So, so the Nazis believed that women should be confined to what they called their natural roles as wives and mothers, okay? So, almost like birthing the strong soldiers who are going to fight for for the for the you know for the for the fatherland. These kind of things, okay? So, women were encouraged to leave work, marry, and breed. Okay, we'll look a little bit about this in a minute. Abortion was illegal. Okay, the idea of abortion was uh, was illegal. However, obviously, when we uh, look at the the racial state in in a few more videos time, okay, whilst abortion was illegal for for German women, okay, things like uh, forced sterilization was uh, implemented for people like homosexuals. And uh, what the Nazis called a uh, a socials, okay. So this was this was a, a spurious claim. So things like sterilization and stuff were still implemented by the Nazis against certain racial and ethnic groups. So the party restricted access to contraception in an effort to rise raise the German population. Okay, they wanted they wanted more births effectively. So the Nazis. The Nazis wanted more births. Oops, more births, and that's really what was encouraged. And the reason why is that the Nazis almost saw they almost saw society as a conveyor belt. Okay, they having the women would to produce the the strong Aryan men. And if they produce more women, they will be put onto the put onto the line and made to produce women, uh, made to produce more uh, strong Aryan men, strong Aryan soldiers for for the Nazi society. It was it, that was the sort of system and the sort of role within society that women were given. Okay, and there were actually financial incentives given to those who had children. And mothers who had large families were held in esteem, and they were given they were given awards. So we have the we have the Mother's Cross, for example, okay. And you would get you would get different levels of award depending on how many children you have, which is an incentive to have more children, obviously. And that uh, crossed with the fact that they were given high esteem in society, and that there were financial incentives really get, made them. Uh, made the incentive to have more children so there was there was oh, there was an incentive incentive to have more children more children okay and in 1936 we see the the results to of all these okay so in 1936 there were 30 percent more births than there were in 1933 so in some part due to these policies other parts due to just general economic success and people feeling more comfortable within their own homes and within their own families okay uh, more secure but the combination of things led to an increase in births in by 1936 so just three years later so when we look at the idea of society within the Nazi uh, regime, we have to look at the idea of Volksgemeinschaft, which was the people's community. It was really the centre of the Nazi sort of societal ideology. 
Okay, so the principle of the people's community or the Volksgemeinschaft, um, if you want to write this in, oops, if you want to write this in an essay, get used to spelling it because it is, it's a long word to be able to spell. <laughs> okay, so it was very popular in Nazi society and it was partly based on fascist ideology. Okay, so the Nazi party rallied in Nuremberg every September. Okay. I'm not able to draw straight lines properly. It, oh my lord, it's not letting me do it. Straight lines. This is terrible. Okay. So the Nazi party rallied every September, okay, as a way to sort of drill this message of 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 people's community, okay? So so there was it was no individuals. That's really what was seen during this time. So we see no no individuals within the Nazi regime, just to, together as a society, okay? Together as a society. And really it was generally seen as an expression of strength and unity, an expression of hard work, an expression of hard work. And one of the uh, the Nazi sort of slogans was blood and toil, blood and soil, sorry. Okay. So we've got this idea of this, this people's community together. And it almost sounds like a really, uh, really relatively utopian dream. Okay. If we just... If we forget about these for forget about the the negatives for a second. This sounds like a good society, in some cases, despite the fact that the role of women was very very uh, what we would regard today as technically misogynistic. Living standards increased. Okay, people were generally happier. People were encouraged to work. Okay, people were encouraged to come together as a society, and as a people's community rather than being individuals. Okay. So what really were the downsides? Well, obviously there were definitely downsides to the Nazi society. So despite the idea of people's community, it was ultimately still a dictatorship, okay? So the Nazi party was still in charge and it was still authoritarian. The idea of people's community was not very... Uh, not very accurate since Jewish people, homosexuals, travellers and what they decided were asocials were excluded from the group and eventually they would be uh, they would be killed they would be killed uh, f for you know they would be killed for it I should say killed for it okay so ultimately even though this sounds like a utopian dream okay well when we look at the Nazis economic as well as their societal policies it sounds like a brilliant brilliant strategy of, of government institution and and bringing new policies in however as we looked at in the last video their economic policies were were not exactly as much as positive as as we could make out really there were lots of negative downsides there were a lot of propaganda uh, sort of initiatives that were you know put in place to try and to try and give the impression of uh, better standards and when it comes to society we have an increase in living standards we have this beautiful idea of a people's community however women weren't particularly respected within the society only as um the only as people who have children okay the tr the, the what we'll call the traditional role of the woman and then the idea of a people's community sounded great as well except it it didn't actually really um, create a society of people working together. It created a society of some people working together at the expense and the exclusion of others. And that's really what one of the cornerstones of fascism are, is. Okay, so you have to have an enemy if you want to be uh, fascist, effectively. So in the next video, we're going to really examine this idea of Nazi society before we move on to Nazi racial policies, okay?